Hello and welcome to At Home for the Holidays. Honestly, I am so happy you've all joined me here today. And right now we're coming live from my home in LA. And because I'm live, trust me, and it's the holidays, Christmas is beckoning, I'll be on my best bloody behavior, okay? Let's be honest, I know it's been a crazy year, but I just want to say a big thank you to all of you because we're just shy now of nearly 20 million subscribers on YouTube. And that's from around the world, uh, different ages, from the age of six to 96. And everywhere I travel, they're always saying, you know, we love the scrambled egg recipe. And um, can you show us again how to cook more steaks? So a big thank you. And with that 20 million subscribers, it sort of relates to you've watched this face nearly three and a half billion times. Honestly, I couldn't be more grateful for the views and... I can't wait to show you more exciting content across 2022. So a big thank you. Um, let's be honest and let's take a moment to reflect over the last 18 months. Um, I've been so impressed to how well you've all been cooking. And if there's one thing this sort of lockdown, pandemic, tough times has made us appreciate how important food is across the table and the importance of breaking bread and sharing stuff. So uh, trust me, I'll be watching your videos very, very closely. So with the holidays only days away, I'm guessing the majority of you still haven't planned what to cook. Well, the good news is today I'm going to help solve that problem uh, with my ultimate holiday meal. And this is quick, delicious, but more importantly, easy to do. So the menu, first off, uh, we're going to start off with an amazing pan seared scallop with a delicious butternut squash puree. And that's going to be lifted with an amazing pomegranate slaw. So it's going to combine that sort of earth and the sea and that fresh of the slaw is going to be incredible. Then on to the main. Um, rumours have it that the old turkey, those things are sparse, okay? They're, they're a little bit sought after. So I've lined up a, a chicken thigh, and it's a delicious lemon herb chicken thigh with a crispy bacon gravy. And it's this sort of go-to perfect comfort uh, dish that when you see hits the table, I promise you everyone wants to dive in there. Then we're going to move on to some exciting sides because everyone struggles cooking vegetables properly. So I'm going to show you an amazing way how to elevate a leek. Um, and when I say elevate a leek, I'm talking about a braised leek. Um, and then I'm going to show you again how to do some beautiful roasted vegetables all in one pan. And then to lift it up, um, I'll show you how to make a very simple, delicious salad that is stress-free but is a great eye-opener at the table. And then the grand finale will be an amazing, stunning panna cotta. 90% um, of this is all about the prep, okay? And so if we get the prep right, the cooking becomes easy. And as a chef, I've always been asked, you know, everywhere I go, what pans do you use? What knives do you cut with? And I say, it's all down to the personal choice. And so um, pans for me is like, it's like driving a car. And so Hexclad and I have been working together for the last two years and developed these amazing pans. But more importantly, I need to feel the handle. I need to feel comfortable. The non-stick element is amazing, but it retains the heat. And you'll see across this live cook that we're coming out of the oven onto the table and these pans are just that good and diverse. And because we're live, and you know I love going live, and let's be honest, every chef on the planet cooks live every night in the restaurant. So you'll see proper cooking, no editing, and just... Just, just some magic uh, between you and I. And across this cook, we'll be doing some live questions. And I know I've got uh, questions coming in from the Outer Hebrides in Scotland, uh, right down to San Diego. Um, but we're here to cook, and I'm glad you're with me on this journey. And we're live, okay? Promise not to screw it up. Follow things carefully. Come in with those questions. Um, I'd just like to show you that I'm very lucky to be where I am because of the talented team that are alongside me. Not underneath me, not on top of me, but side by side. And you think I'm on my own, but um, Patrick, would you just pan to the entire team and just say hello? Just so you can say hello back. Little wave, there you go. <laughs> nice jumper, by the way, Justin Mandel. Beautiful. So we've been here since five o'clock this morning, setting this thing up. And like I said, no editing, it's live. And a big thank you to YouTube. Um, for giving me this opportunity to show you how to make Christmas a little less stressful. Right, um, let's get on with the cooking. Um, chicken thighs first. Um, why am I using thighs? Um, honestly, I prefer using thighs than I do with the breast, especially when you're braising this thing, okay? First off, get the pan nice and hot, okay? We want to get that heat up. 
get that cranking. I'm going to sear off the chicken first and then give it a really nice color. That is really important, okay? And this thigh meat is unique because it can take a really good sear. Don't put anything in the pan until you're ready. How many times I watch people put oil in the pan, they go to use it, it's burnt. So get everything ready first and then go into the pan. Lift that chicken over. We'll start off with a little bit of olive oil in there. Crank up that amazing heat. So this is a really nice sort of braised chicken thigh. And the nice thing about this is that, you know, even cold the next day is delicious. A couple of minutes in the oven, but it retains everything. Okay. Skin side down first into the pan. Hear that noise, that crispiness. So get that seared beautifully. We're going to put some color on the chicken. How many times have you said it? Yes, no color, no flavor. Wash my hands. Just in case the old uh, salmonella, please, are watching me. I'm not talking about salmonella, the twins next door. I'm talking about the salmonella, please. Hands nice and clean. Right. Get that chicken really nice and seared. I've seasoned the skin. I'm going to season the side now with the bone, okay? Now, I'm going to put a little touch of heat in there. Just a chili flake. And that is going to help lift that amazing flavor. Now, from there, season the top. I don't like adding flour to thicken things. I like to cook the flour out. So that's really important. Just crank that heat up again. And you'll see when this pan goes into the oven, what I'm talking about in terms of how it comes out and onto the table, it sits on the trivet, and it's a beautiful, beautiful dish. Now, I said to you lemon with the chicken. Why? It's going to lift up that flavour and it's going to make the sort of gravy less rich. And all we're going to do is just top and tail the lemon, okay, and then stick that in literally into quarters. Now, I love this dish and we're using the thigh. The drum is equally as delicious and the lemon just lifts the flavor. But before I turn that chicken, take a little tablespoon of flour into a little sieve, okay? And just lightly dust the chicken with that flour. I'll explain why. This is gonna help the base of the gravy, okay? And more importantly, as we roast that flour off, it imparts an amazing flavor and literally helps give the sauce a little bit of a body, which just lifts up that nice richness. Now, check one first. When you turn something in the pan, don't continue turning unless they're colored. Okay, so make sure that you've got color on them first before you turn them. Crank the heat up, because this side of the chicken we're gonna to turn to now is cold, so it'll bring the temperature of the pan down. So over, over. Now, look at that color, beautiful. And now we're gonna sort of fry that flour, and that's going to make this amazing, really good, rich gravy. This thing can be done in the morning, and then left in the evening and put back in the oven for sort of 15, 20 minutes to reheat. It's just, a, it's an easy dish, and trust me, in our household, with so many kids, it's a sort of, it's a get out of jail card. And I know, you know, everyone stresses about that bird, and the turkey, etc. Chicken is a great alternative, especially across the holidays. And even if it's a Sunday lunch, it's a great way of doing it. Now, in there, let's lift up with a little bit of fragrance, okay? A touch of thyme. Just sit it in there. I like keeping it whole. It's easy to take out. What happens? All these little buds come off the stem. Flavor the chicken. You just take out the stalks. Big deal. Rosemary the same way, okay? A nice big stick of rosemary. Now, from there, I've got good color on the chicken, okay? What I'm going to do now is take that chicken out. You can hear those herbs crashing away. So beautiful. From there, once that's out, keep the heat in the pan, okay? And I'll explain why now. Look at that. That flavor is beautiful. Okay, in with my bacon, okay? And this is where we start to build up those amazing flavors. Bacon goes in. Beautiful. Lemon, bacon, amazing. Onions in. Now I've got a bit of heat in there with that beautiful chili, okay? When you get a chance to cook chili flakes so early on, they become less powerful. 
and it sort of brings the heat in a very mellow way. But look what's happening now to that bacon. That amazing flavor. The lemon is really sort of bringing down that heat, but more importantly, with all that flavor from that chicken in there. Now, this is a beautiful cider. Again, it just lines up the flavor. It lays the pan with a touch of cider, literally half a bottle, okay? And then from there, mix that in. And when we say deglaze, it's a bit of a shepherd thing. All we're doing is just washing the bottom of the pan, okay? And what we're washing, we're washing that flavor that comes back up into that amazing chicken. From there, take a little touch of stock, okay? I'm going to use chicken stock because it's chicken. You can use vegetables if you wish. But beef stock, a little bit too heavy, a little bit too rich. So look, lift that up. Now... Bring that back up to the boil, and then from there, get your chicken, skin side up, okay, and literally sit that back in, that amazing flavor, right? Really important. Now, here's the, here's the magic. Lemon started to sort of disintegrate. What actually happens, that lemon sort of breaks down and gives a nice little sort of bitter flavor to that chicken. Bring the temperature back up, which is really important. I'm gonna sit a little touch of chili on top so that skin gets even crispier. I'm gonna get some more lemon, okay? I'm gonna zest the lemon on top of that chicken. And so this is gonna make it really fragrant. And the reason why I haven't covered the thighs in stock is because I want the thighs to absorb all that stock, okay? The skin to get nice and crispy, that bacon to render down, and we make this sort of nice lemony, herby, delicious gravy. I have nightmares with the word gravy because it's that sort of stodge that looks like your granddad's wallpaper paste from school. So I want to lighten things up with the gravy and make it really exceptional. From there, a touch of seasoning on top. What that does, it helps get rid of some of the moisture from that chicken. We've lost a lot of seasoning because we're turning it and tossing it around, but I want that skin to get nice and crispy. We'll see why in a minute. Now, Season on top. And what happens now? The thigh absorbs all that stock. The skin gets nice and crispy. And 20 minutes later, you've got this succulent, juicy thigh. Delicious. And this crispy topping. And underneath this nice, lemony, herby gravy. Right. Told you it wasn't that difficult. Job one done. Into the oven we go with that. Okay. High heat around sort of 320, 330. Now. Next, I'm always asked, um, leeks, you know, what do we do? Is it, is it a leek and potato soup? What else can we do with leeks? So I'm gonna show you how to do something pretty stunning and elevate these leeks. They're gonna be sort of braised, pan seared, and then cooked with a beautiful miso glaze. And something quite sweet about a leek, and when you add miso to it, so a touch of mirin, uh, it's mind blowing. It is absolutely delicious. So over here, please, um, Richard, Patrick, just pan down. <clears throat> so these leeks, they've been um, peeled, the outer leaves have been discarded, cut in half, and all I do is just dunk them in water, okay, and that opens up all these little flaps and it stops the sort of sand from hiding in there, and you sort of vigorously push it down and that just cleans your leek, nothing worse than a dirty leek at Christmas, let me tell you. Pan nice and hot, I'm going to get the uh, olive oil in because I want some rich texture to these leeks, and when you think how cheap these leeks are, you'll see the transformation of this flavor profile on a freaking leek, okay? It's something that chefs use for a stock. We're gonna braise them and they are so delicious. So get that oil nice and hot. In we go with the leeks. What I've done here is I've kept the root on. So that holds the whole thing together as it's braising. If we took that off, they'll disintegrate and separate. So hold the root on. If it's clean, it's edible, okay? Once that's cooked beautifully, it literally does hold the whole thing together. Leaks into the pan, okay? Roll them over and just push them together, almost like sort of sandwich them together. Now, from there, once we start to get that color on there, okay? Leeks is a very hard vegetable to get right. So, lightly season, salt, pepper, color them nicely. Okay, again from there, a little touch of chili flake, you can lift that up. And then, watch. 
once you start to get that colour on them, turn them upside down, turn them back over, and look at that beautiful colour. So good. Now, we've got that flavour in there. From there, a little touch of stock, just a touch of stock. Spray beautifully in. Keep the heat in the pan. And now in with a miso, okay? So I'll just let this down with a touch of stock and then just spoon that over the side of the pan. And the miso is gonna add some texture, it's gonna sweeten things up. But it's such a lovely way of cooking leeks. And they're gonna be like a fast braise, so tasty. Next from there, I've got a little touch of sweet soy. Okay, that's gonna enrich in it and give a little touch of saltiness to those leeks. Delicious. After that, a little hint of some maple. And what that does, it just helps caramelize the sugar from the leeks. And then of course, a tiny, tiny amount of sesame seed oil, tiny. <coughs> and then finally, for some acid, mirin, okay? It's like a nice tablespoon of mirin. Now, look at the flavor in there, honestly. All I'm gonna do next is get my garlic and just sip the garlic over the top of those leeks, bring that to the boil, okay? Put a little touch of butter in there, just in the side. It's gonna enrich the amazing flavor of that braising. And like I said, these leeks take at least 15 to 20 minutes in the oven, but the flavor of these things is off the charts. Touch more stock so it's not too thick. And you're gauging this now, okay? Recipes there as a base, okay? Not to be copied, but as a base for you to elevate. Bring that up to the boil and then into the oven. Now, watch. Chicken's getting nice and crispy. Boiling away. I'm gonna put the oven, crank it up a little bit, put the leeks at the bottom of the oven so they sort of help beautifully braise. So good. Turn that up and then we are motoring. Right, good. Well done. So, chicken's in. We're 20 minutes in. Chicken's in, leeks are in. Um, vegetables. We always worry about so many veg and the variety, and we know how important veg is. So I'm going to show you a really nice sort of cool way of elevating those roasted vegetables. Um, really important. Now, from there, I've got my onions, my turnips, parsnips. Just cut them in half, half again, and then into quarters. Everybody worries about the stem. If you cook them properly, the actual stem purees. And so sometimes when you take off too much of the stem, the actual parsnip overcooks. So I just like to take the tips off because they burn. And then from there, literally slice these down into half and then each one into a quarter. Okay, but the flavor is incredible. And the only way to do this properly is to gauge how long each veg takes. Okay, so I've got my parsnips. With them, I'm gonna slice some beautiful fresh ginger, and that just lightens the flavor of that roasted vegetable finish. Ginger. When you roast ginger, it's just so delicious. So I've got my carrots, my onions, my turnips, and my beautiful parsnips, okay? Now, gauge it. What's gonna take the longest to cook? Honestly, it's gonna be the carrots. They're gonna take the longest. So start off with them first. Now, oil in. Get some really nice color on those carrots, okay? These are beautiful rainbow carrots. Just washed, not even peeled. Then from there, I'll get my onions in, okay? Sit them there. Beautiful whole onions, just sliced into quarters. And then my turnips. And look, these turnips, again, just washed. Don't peel them, the flavor in that skin is incredible. Again, touch more seasoning. Beautifully roasted. Some pepper. And then on this side of the pan, I'm going to go in with my amazing parsnips. You know, we're always worried about serving vegetables separate. I'm saying, look, cook them independently, bring them together at the end. So it's a great way of serving a wonderful bowl of amazing vegetables, especially across the holidays. Okay. So carrots, onions, turnips, parsnips, and then I'm going to just sprinkle that fresh ginger all over them. Now, Ginger in, beautifully done, touch more salt, okay? And then from there, a little bit of chili flake in there. I've got the heat in the pan, 
And now I just want to get that colored. Beautiful. So I don't like blanching a lot of vegetables. I like cooking them from raw in order to really sort of taste the flavor of those vegetables. Really important. So now we're going to go for the mix up and start literally mixing them up. I said earlier, 90% of the battle is when we absolutely get prepped properly and learn to delegate across these holidays. You know, give jobs out to members of the family, whether it's chopping or peeling. And so you can just focus on purely the cooking. So, I love this pan because it's nice and wide, it's shallow sides, and it's just almost like a sort of modern version of the wok for the vegetables. It is beautiful. Now, from there, we'll put a little touch of butter in with my uh, roasted veg. Okay, and that's gonna cause a really nice sort of nut brown flavor. They won't burn, because they started off in olive oil. Okay, butter, generously done. Okay, and then from there, let that butter melt. Now, you could add a couple of sort of tablespoons of water. I like to put a little bit of stock in there. But look, look at the flavor. And the thing about cooking vegetables all at the same time is just make sure they're cut evenly. Okay, so from there, a little bit of my stock around the outside. Beautiful. So beautiful. And then from there, I'm going to pop them into the oven. They're going to cook down, they're going to absorb that stock, that butter, that flavor. And just look at those colors. The colors are beautiful. Into the oven we shall go. Now, in we go. There's three main things already done in a way that it's sort of become a little bit less stressful. And I think for me, the most important thing is understanding the essence of that prep. I'm going to quickly show you my chicken where we are, because we're live and there's no swap outs. But just look, I'm going to Patrick's cam. Look at that. That's bubbling down. That stock is reducing beautifully. The skin's getting nice and crispy. All those flavors are permeating those thighs and it's absolutely lifting the flavor. This is chicken thigh, for God's sake. They cost 55 pence each or a dollar. And then check out the leeks. These things are beautiful. So beautiful. Again, I can tell whether they're cooked or not when I put my knife in there. And there's a little bit of resistance, okay? You want that knife to sort of go through like it's butter. But when you take these leeks out, sometimes I just have these, these leeks for tea, dinner. Tea is what we, when we were growing up, it's called tea. And if I grated some Parmesan cheese on there and gratinated them on the grill, it's just the most elegant way of ever eating a leek. Right, good. Leeks in, chicken in, vegetables in. Once you've got that done, it sort of, it, it creates a lot more freedom because you've got those main issues of that party menu off your shoulders. So um, I know we're live. I'm going to go and get some, um, some questions now. Um, we have our... A question there, Justin, please. Yes, hello. Um, oh, hello. Hello, oh, kid. Hello. We've been getting questions from around the world right now. We'll start one with David from Belgium. David from Belgium. David from Belgium wants to know, how long does a turkey need to be in the oven? Uh, David, come on. It depends how big your bird is. Well, first of all, you know, they should be cooking minimum two and a half to three hours. I always say, um, weigh out the bird um, and then devise the time according to the weight. But the secret of cooking a great turkey is letting it rest for as long as it cooks. And more importantly, baste. You know, those birds need basting. And if we don't sort of open up those legs at the side and baste in between those thighs, um, you're gonna have a raw sort of thigh and an overcooked breast. So baste, baste, baste. Minimum should be two and a half to three hours. But I promise you now, if you let it rest, and the secret behind letting it rest is turning the bird upside down halfway after you rest it. Good question. Good luck, by the way. Uh, Char from the US wants to know, how can I make scrambled eggs more luxurious for the morning after Thanksgiving uh, for breakfast or brunch using last night's ingredients? Char, really? You've not watched YouTube? I think we have 40 million viewers now watching that. Incredible. Uh, Gordon Ramsay recipe for scrambled eggs. Um, so it's a big staple across a brunch. Uh, I like to make those eggs a little bit fluffy. Finish them with things like smoked salmon or any smoked fish in there. It's just beautiful. But the secret behind any great scrambled egg 
is to put a tablespoon of creme fraiche in that stops the eggs from overcooking, but more importantly, absolutely makes them light and fluffy, okay? So yeah, that's really important. Good question. Um, let's see, let's go to Eddie, who's asking, she, I love a Christmas dinner, but I yes. still have some questions. Is it better to put a dry rub on a turkey or a wet brine? Eddie, 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 Eddie. Uh, it works both ways. If you've got the space to brine uh, a turkey, then that's great, uh, really good to do, thank you. And so for me, um, the secret of a great turkey um, is on that rub. So when you're not brining, here's the tip. Do that dry rub the night before and rub all the skin all over with that beautiful combination of those spices and those herbs. And then on the morning when you cook it, line, line underneath the skin with that beautiful scented butter. And that will prevent that turkey from becoming dry. But I always go brine. If you can't brine it, then I promise you, seasoning and marinating your turkey the night before. So those herbs almost stain the color of that skin, line it with butter underneath. You'll have an amazing turkey for holidays. Uh, I am human wants to know, how do I make my roasts more moist? I've always noticed that when I'm making my roast in a crock pot, it's always dry, even after adding broth. Wow. wow. <laughs> so um, dry roast, nothing worse than that. Um, any good roast needs to be um, needs to be basted. And also it's about the stock. What kind of stock have you got in there? And I always say, start off with an intense heat. Get that beautiful color on that. Uh, whether it's a tri-tip, whether it's a rolled sirloin, whatever it may be, but get the color on it and then shut down the heat and let it cook slowly. But as it's cooking, I promise you, get a ladle of those juices and keep on basting. If you're short of juices at the bottom of your tray, just get some butter and stick some butter on there. If it's coloring too fast, get some foil and put some foil on there and take it off for the last 20 minutes to cook. Nothing worse than a dry roast. Mary from Oklahoma wants to know, what are some good salvaging tips? Like say your pie isn't setting, but the crust is already burnt or your stuffing is too soggy. What would you do? Mary, 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 um, nothing worse than a burnt crust. Um, that's a really good question. When we make pies at sort of uh, Christmas the holidays, we tend to make all the beautiful ragu first and cook the pie crust separately on a flat tray. And then depending on who you've got coming around, Cut them out with cutters, your pie crust. So you heat up that chicken pot pie, for instance, and then garnish it with pie crust. Pie crust cook can last three or four days in a normal kitchen. You just flash it through the oven. And so don't worry too much about doing the perfect pie crust. Cook the crust separate sometimes and add it to the pie at the end. It works beautifully, especially across a very busy time. Um, Lily from the UK wants to know, what are your Lily. tips for the ultimate roasties and what's the best way to use up leftover turkey? Lily, 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 um, really good question. So um, roasties, you know, we've all got leftover roast potatoes in the fridge, okay? And the big one for me is to get them nice and firm and then to get a grater and grate them, okay? And if you get this grater, it's almost like a, a sort of hash brown and you grate them, chop up some scallions or spring onions or red onions and then fry them and it makes this really nice potato hash so do not waste those leftover roast potatoes i promise you grating them or even chopping them fine and making this lovely sauteed hash brown that with an egg on top a little devil of hp sauce honestly uh that for me is perfect leftover turkey every year we get asked the same question um you can't beat a beautiful turkey noodle soup and use that carcass to get a great stock, shred all that meat from there, and then drop in things like tiny little bits of orzo, fresh vegetables in there. And so you've got this amazing soup, because sometimes we get a little bit overwhelmed, we just want a nice big bowl of turkey broth soup. That is a great way of utilizing it. I'm fed up with everyone saying curries and do this to that. You cannot beat a turkey broth noodle soup. Perfect. Right, last question. No, uh, Justin, don't be tight. It's Christmas. I know. I Come know. on. Uh, Susan you from New York. Tonight? Susan from New York. Are you on a date tonight? I'm not. Definitely not. Um, Susan from New York wants to know why are you taking my son away for three Thanksgivings in a row? Su <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> That's unfair, Mrs. Mandel. Um, we're off to Patagonia. We're going to this extraordinary uh, part uh, of South America. Uh, I didn't realize it fell on Thanksgiving, um, but hear me out. I promise you, he's got you the biggest present he's ever bought in his entire life. He's crying his eyes out. He's asking for discounts, but he's coming back 
and I promise you now, he's got some sweet treats for you, um, and uh, I'll bring him back in one piece. Thank you for that. Really? <laughs> it's the holidays, I have to ask. Right, thank you. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah, thank you. Happy holidays and happy Hanukkah. Uh, right, uh, back to the most important part, the cooking. Uh, butternut squash, okay, this puree is so delicious. You know, having three amazing girls, they go veggie from time to time, vegan from time to time, or they just have this beautiful butternut squash uh, soup. So we cut the squash in half, we season it, we bake it in the oven for 35, 40 minutes, and then we scrape it into a pan, blitz it into a puree, and it comes down to this amazing, wonderful, incredible puree. This can transform into an amazing soup for us at Christmas, or it can be added as an amazing vegetable, but it's just such a lovely thing to have done across the holidays, a butternut squash puree, so diverse. Now, I just wanna show you one more thing. I wanna get these leeks out, okay? And then I'm gonna start with the amazing scallops. Have a look at these leeks. Honestly, this is incredible because the flavor inside these is beautiful. And it's going to want to make you run down to the shop and buy leeks. Just look how soft and delicious they are when you pick these up. Honestly, they are so freaking delicious. It's just a great way of eating a very humble, cheap vegetable. Beautiful. Right, check on my chicken. That's 25 minutes in there. Still not done, but getting nice and crispy. Really crispy. Right, scallops, as you know, I love this dish because it's quite a luxury at Christmas or around the holidays, so it's a special treat. The secret is in the cooking. I've done it many times, so I'm gonna do it again today because it's quite magical for me, um, cooking a scallop beautifully. Um, hand dive scallops, I've taken them out the shell. They're off, they're sort of uh, coral. We save that for a little bit of stock, um, but the sheen on these things are just beautiful. Little secret, dry them in between a towel overnight, takes out that moisture, therefore we get a nice color on them. Um, I call that the fat side, the shiny side. That's the top of the shell, that's the bottom. It's the top that goes into the pan. We're gonna go at 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. So we go around in a clockwork formation. So as you know, to come back to the top, to turn the first one so they're perfectly cooked. And I'm quite a stickle for cooking these things. And, Many times I've eaten them in restaurants that have tasted like the inside of a freaking golf ball. So I'm going to show you how to cook these things beautifully. And as an appetizer, a starter, or even as a main course, it goes so well. The garnish for that, I've got um, some cabbage. I'm going to turn this into a beautiful little uh, slaw. Red cabbage, uh, uh, white cabbage, and then I've got some um, pomegranates, hazelnuts, and a little bit of a amazing quince beautiful quince vinaigrette. It's very tart, it's acidic, and it goes well with the sweetness of those scallops. Okay, first off, um, let's get the pan nice and hot for the scallops. Okay, now, get that heat up nice and high. Okay, the secret here is 90 seconds in the seasoning. 90 seconds in the pan, a nice season first. Okay, and then literally, scallops go in. I like to use little amount of salt. Rock salt is so much better than the fine salt. The fine salt burns. The rock salt sort of helps to crust the scallops and it does taste so good. But it's such an easy dish. Once all the guests are sat, I like to think of this starter as something that can be done and then literally you step away from the table, slaw done, scallops roasted, puree done, served, and then let them dive in and understand how much exciting flavor is going on there. Okay, pan. Nice and hot, okay? Trust me, it's gonna be worth it. Scallops in first, okay? Let's start off, like I said, down. 12 o'clock in, one o'clock. Gas is getting a little bit too high, so I'll come off the heat, okay? Just come off the heat, nothing wrong with that at all. Scallops in. Now we're only cooking them once, okay? So be very smart. And don't panic about a hot pan, just take it off the heat. Don't throw anything in there. Don't douse it down, just literally take it off the heat. And the ice coldness of those scallops, okay, will cool down the pan instantly. Then we put it back onto the heat. Now we've got that beautiful sear going on. 12 o'clock all the way around. Whilst they're cooking, with my salad, um, dress it nicely, okay? When you dress salads, less is more in terms of the vinaigrette, okay? Because that acidity 
kills the salad, which makes it watery. So be very smart how you dress salads. Less is more, okay? From there, I'm gonna sprinkle my beautiful pomegranate seeds over, some chopped roasted hazelnuts, okay? And then just a little touch of lemon. Lemon zest, again, I'm a stickler for lemon zest because it's free. Every lemon and lime and orange, there's so much zest there. Use it to liven things up, okay? That's the garnish ready. Now, have a look at these scallops, okay? I'm gonna bring them over here and just help you a little bit. So I can just show you when we turn these things. I go 12 o'clock and turn them over. 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Look at the color on those. Back onto the heat. Really important now, color's there. Keep that momentum up, okay? Really important. From there, take your lemon. I've taken the zest. We should never throw a lemon in the bin or the trash unless we zested it, okay? I've got some beautiful dry cranberries going into the slaw. And then to elevate this, get a nice bunch of fresh mint and just roughly chop that, okay? Lift that up and give it a chop. But chop it once, okay? I want the freshness in the slaw. Don't over chop your herbs. I want that flavor in that slaw, okay? Beautiful. Now, 30 seconds, those scallops are gonna come out. Lemon sits on top of the scallop, a little douse, just a touch. And then literally 10 seconds before those scallops come out, this is where my butter goes in, okay? Butter goes in. And this is where it turns into like a benoisette. They got a really nice nutty brown flavor. And that's gonna mar and match the flavor of the hazelnut in that beautiful, incredible salad, okay? Beautiful. Now, touch them. And they should be a little bit resistant, just like taking your pulse. Justin, take your pulse kick. Do you have a pulse? Have a take it, take it. How soft is it? Tell me. <laughs> I'll buy you one for Christmas, okay? There you go. Scallops out. Okay, I'm gonna go round clockwise, like I said, to put them in the pan, so they're all cooked evenly. So the last one I take out is the last one I put in the pan. Really important. I know that sounds a little bit petty, but for me, it's so important. Season that over the top. Now, let them sit there for 30 seconds, okay? Oh my goodness. And this is where, this is where we start to lift these things now. As it hits the table, um, I'm gonna go on there, okay? So, with my puree. First off, let's start off with a nice dollop of scallop from there. One, general size puree. This flavor, the combination is incredible. I cannot tell you. And as a sort of little appetizer, you have one nice, beautiful scallop. It is just so tasty. Again, when we sit these things on the plate, the round part of the scallop goes to the round part of the plate. So that just sits on there nicely, round around generously the color is exceptional the smell with that butter in the end is just beautiful so sit them on there okay and then from there get your slaw okay and just lift that nicely i said to you i've dressed it lightly okay and all i'm going to do now is just drop a little touch of slaw in the middle of those scallops and the puree you sort of scrape that off with the mint and the puree. And it's just so luscious, clean and fresh. And then I'm a stickler for height, so I just like a little bit of height on the plate. And then finally, from there, I get my lemon and just sit that on there. If that doesn't scream holidays, festive party, I don't know what will. A little touch of that quince vinaigrette, okay? And let that sit and run into the puree. When you start tasting that butternut squash puree, with that incredible quince vinaigrette and the roasted scallop. It is so tasty. And there's the beautiful scallop. So my leeks, my scallops. And next, you can see it all come together now, right? It's all happening. My vegetables, oh my goodness me. Do you want to taste? And just glaze them over and look at them. Again, just check them, go into the turnip first. Knife is just running right through. Parsnip, done. Right through, soft and elegant. And the nice thing about that, 
now that I've got that beautiful glaze on there because everything's reduced down, I get my fresh herbs. I'm going to throw that over there, okay? And then literally give them a little toss and just let them sit there with those fresh herbs on top. That's a beautiful way, a stunning way of cooking fresh vegetables. Beautiful scallops. Oh my goodness me. Wait, do you see the chicken? It is ridiculous. So beautiful. And we are not quite crispy yet, but it's gonna get there in three or four minutes. So scallops done, vegetables roasted, leeks elevated into the Premier League salad. Again, just having that amazing sort of connect with my girls in terms of how important their eating habits are and trying to, you know, just make them feel at ease with eating an amazing salad. Um, I love freshening things up. So I always take a little uh, box grater. I get an apple, a beautiful apple, and I grate, just grate. I get the apples out the freezer, okay? And I sort of just grate this thing, literally, to order as they sit down, okay? And then from there, look, blue cheese. Um, I freeze this and it helps crumble over the salad beautifully. Bang that down. When you see fresh grated apple over a salad, it's just so beautiful. It's like a little hidden gem and it gives that nice little fresh kick to a salad. This is a little baby gem salad that I've just washed and cleaned and made sure that it's nice and crisp in the fridge. And now we dress it, okay? Less is more. First off, just get your spoon and just pick tiny little bits of that blue cheese. And because it's frozen, you get these tiny little bits. There's nothing worse than having a big lump of ice cold blue cheese in your mouth. So, Justin, any more questions, please? Not from your mum, please. Uh, I've got a question for you. Yes, what's the question? Can... No, 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 hold on, hold on. Are you on a date tonight? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, no, I'm just because a few viewers in the Outer Hebrides in Scotland that are young, free, and single would love to, you to come over and replicate this food and cook an amazing dinner. Yeah, unfortunately, we're in LA. I don't think I can get over for this evening. Stop being a snob. Where's I'm the will? There's a way. I'm Always not being a, way. a snob. There's come not on. supersonic flights yet. Ever seen Braveheart? Yes. There you go. Come on, Willie Wallace. You've got this. <laughs> salad. Back to dressing this thing lightly. Don't dress it too early. Okay, dress it too early, you're going to kill the salad. So I just like to drizzle this vinaigrette and we've got a little bit of persimmon here now so i'm getting very festive but just look if you ever dress a salad honestly it's going to look somewhat weighted down and it's just going to look sort of soggy keep it crisp dress lightly and then it's festive i've got some beautiful roasted walnuts okay beautiful roasted walnuts and then finally a little bit of a there's a little bit of sort of ramsey trick it's a, just a, a red wine shallot sort of crispy, delicious, amazing onion on top of that, okay? Now, from there, that is a salad. I'm telling you now, that is the ultimate salad. So, so look at me, let's recap. We've got the scallops, roasted vegetables, braised leeks, a beautiful salad, and then I'm gonna bring out the chicken. I can't tell you how excited I am. I know Haley's behind the team are here, but there's no swap outs, this is live. And it just goes to show you can get this thing done beautifully. You ready? Justin, you ready? You should be running with all the ingredients to Scotland on this and cook. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Come on. Now you can't even identify any flour in there, okay? You've got that beautiful bacon, lemon, onion gravy. You've got this crisp, amazing. Hear that? It's the sound of Justin brushing his teeth in the morning. That is crisp. That is crispier than his wife runs on his first date on Tinder. I'm telling you, that is the way to cook a perfect chicken. Now, we all have a little bit of a sweet tooth and we like to indulge. So I kept this very simple and have done a, an amazing panna cotta. It's a bit of a showstopper. As you know, it's beautiful uh, vanilla, cream, and milk. How do you set this thing? I use very little gelatine. Sometimes I use a caramel to set my beautiful panna cotta's in, but it's something that can be done the day before and brought out and just finished at the table. So here we go. <coughs> right. Ooh, thanks, Haley. So these beautiful, little, amazing nuggets. So first of all, 
they should just wobble beautifully, the perfect texture. And so don't overset them because you want that amazing flavor going on inside. And that's just a creamy vanilla infused set custard is delicious. I've got a little touch of a pomegranate reduction and that's just gonna sit on top and just pour them over. Don't go crazy, okay? And let it, let it, let it sort of just drizzle out. Oh my goodness me. And let it spread beautifully, okay? And then from there, it will form this beautiful little film across that sort of seals the deal. I've got a naughty drip that irritates me. And then finally, some beautiful little shaved chocolate, okay? I like the sort of dark chocolate. Milk chocolate is beautiful, white chocolate is lovely. And then for that crunch, just a little pomegranate on top. And when you get these blocks like this, you know, the easiest way to get them really nice is freeze it and then get your knife and literally just pull and pull the knife towards you very carefully. Stop halfway and then literally look, got these amazing little shards that just go on there. Okay. And that is a beautiful way. One more. Again, nice and carefully. Flat. Knife down. And then look. Got these beautiful little shards. No need to temper chocolate the long way around. Just on top. And there we have a beautiful, stunning dessert that I know Justin Mandel is now packing his bags and on his way to the Highlands in hope that he cooks a delicious dinner. That hopefully his mum stops nagging me that hopefully gets a serious relationship across 2022. And there you go, a perfect holiday meal. Just take a look how beautiful this is. And I know if you follow the instructions and just get inspired about what we've just done, um, you can recreate this, okay? I promise you, 90% of the battle is in the prep. Good luck to you all. I'd like to say a big thank you across the planet for tuning in today, because I love this kind of stuff, okay? And the comments coming in, honestly, Justin's not going to be lonely at Christmas. I can't wait to see your dishes. Tag me in when you get a chance to cook them. And who knows, I may even react to some of them. And you know those reactions for me are like, you know, it's, it makes my day. A big thank you to the amazing team here that helped put me where I am today. But most importantly, from myself and the entire Ramsey family, and even Oscar, who even at the weekend was standing up at the window and looking for Father Christmas, six weeks out. Be of yourself, young man. Have a very safe and incredible holiday. Take care and lots of love.